Hi you guys, how are you? My name is Emmanuel King and I am one of the head coaches here at the Talent Agency Guide. So I want to talk to you today about beats in your scene. If you think about powerful singers like Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Christina Aguilera, and think about their range. You think about how they can hit falsetto, they can hit tenor, they can hit, you get the point where someone else can only play one note. So the reason why they're so dynamic is because they can go from high to low to mid range. They have full control of their instrument. That is how you want your scenes to be. You want them to be colorful. You don't want to play a scene in one tone or one note. So another way to look at beats is to think of them as tactics. These are ways your character attempts to achieve his or her objective in the scene. Now, your objective is what your character desires to achieve with the other character or characters in the scene. Your aim is to change the other character from point A to point B. The other character is resisting the change in some way or has an opposite opinion or view. This is what creates your conflict in the scene, the obstacles that you're going to have to overcome in the scene, and is the test whether your character is going to actually achieve their goal. It's always about the other person, never about you. When deciding on your objective, it shouldn't be too easy and it should be something interesting for your character to attempt, something with a definite success or failure by the end of the scene. So your character is on a singular mission to influence someone else. That does not fluctuate. What does change and needs to change in order to make your performance interesting is the different ways, the various ways your character attempts to make this happen by trying different tactics, beats to get the other character to shift their position so that you can win your objective in the scene. Think back when you were a child and you were trying to convince your parent to take you somewhere fun, like an amusement park. So you might start out by saying sweetly, mom, I cleaned up my room and I finished all of my homework for the weekend. I, and I did get an A on my history test. Can we go to Disneyland? We may call that I've been good tactic. Even though your mom is impressed by all of your good deeds, she still says, oh, son or daughter, it's not a good time to go to the happiest place in the world. We won't be going to Disneyland. Now, you failed so far in your objective. So then you come back and you say, but mom, all my friends are going tomorrow. I'll be the only one who isn't there. Now you are trying to use guilt to try to get what you want. Let's call this the poor me tactic. Still, your mom doesn't give in. So it's time to try something new. So you plop yourself down on the couch, you cross your arms, and you stick out your lower lip and say, you never understand me. <laughs> this is called the pouting tactic. This definitely doesn't convince your mom, but it was worth a try. But your mom still doesn't budge. So this sends you into desperation. Tears well up in your eyes as your face turns red and you scream, just leave me alone. You're the worst mother ever. You run to your room and slam the door. This we call the angry tactic. Perhaps not the best move, but what you were hoping for is that your mom would follow you into your room and say, I'm sorry, honey. I can see this is important to you. Of course you can go. If she had agreed at any time during the scene, you would not have needed to try the different tactics. It's her refusal that affects your different beats. It's what creates the obstacles that allow you to have to try different tactics in order to achieve what you want in the scene. In fact, if she had shown any sign that one of the tactics was working, you wouldn't have changed it. You would have played it for the entire scene. 
It is always the other character that causes you to either continue or alter your strategy. There is nothing more boring than playing one tactic throughout an entire scene. When choosing a monologue or a scene, or if you have a scene that you're going to audition, you want to look for all the different opportunities for you to attempt different tactics. If you watch an actor just be angry the whole scene, that is going to be boring. They may think that they're just being very dramatic, but really what's happening is they're being unimaginative and boring. Make sure that you read your script carefully and look for the tactics and when they change. A beat can last a whole paragraph or you could have several beats in one sentence. But you want to be aware of the changes and be able to allow the other character's reaction to you to trigger them. Look back and see how different each of the above tactics are. Each tactic allows you to travel to a whole new realm of your character's personality. This is what makes for an interesting performance, both for you and your audience. One challenging objective with many different beats or tactics to achieve that objective equals one fascinating scene and a brilliant performance. So make sure that you're breaking down your scenes, you're working on the different beats, the different attempts, the different tries, the different ways that you're going to achieve your character's objective in the scene. I hope this helped you guys. If you are interested in on-camera acting classes or online training, yes, we can teach you right there at your house. Then I want you guys to send us a message and one of our head coaches will reach out and help you. All right, you guys have an amazing day and we'll talk soon.